I give them molasses. What I do is I have to fill it up with water, the, the, the eight ounce cup of water, and I'll throw a couple of tablespoons of honey. Let them find it as a source of food. And they'll go in there and they'll eat it. And at the same time, I'm spraying in the house, so they're not going in there. So what happens, the ants will go try to get in the house, and then, then they go, oh, food, I'll take that instead, right? And then after a while, you say, well, you've got to reduce the population. So you, so you introduce the 5% boric acid. You let them eat that for a few weeks. Then you reduce it to 1%. That's the trick. You've got to you, you gotta take it from 5% down to 1%. And the formulation that I've developed over the years of doing this that really works, let's say you have 100%, of, you have 100%, right? So 1% of that, you want that to be boric acid, right? So you still have 99% left, right? 25 of that 99%, you want it to be some form of sugar. Okay, so you got 26%. So what do you have left over? Come on, who's the math people? 74. So the 74% is water. And that's your, that's your 1% formulation, okay? See what I mean? That's real. And if you give the ants 1% formulation on a regular basis, that means that it's not so strong that the ladies who eat it are dying. They take it back to their colony. Your Majesty. Because remember, they share the food. What happens is that 1% will build up enough to where it kills some of them on a regular basis. It keeps the population down. You do not want to kill the queen. You kill the queen, they get another queen. Right? So the 1% is the mixture. So that means you want 1% boric acid, 25% sugar. So that's, sugar could be anything as long as it doesn't have preservative because then it won't touch it. I know because I added uh, corn syrup, I mean uh, pancake syrup, right? Preservative, they left it alone. I did the, in, in my school, um, in the sixth grade through the ninth grade, I did all these tests. One of them was, you know, what do ants like to eat? And I also did my famous beer test. Beer and snails, you know about beer and snails. It's not the beer they go after, it's the, ferment, it's the, the when something ferments, you have this yeast smell. That's what they go after. Their favorite thing was whiskey. I did beer, I did whiskey, did wine. I got the whiskey from a wino in the corner. I gave them 20 bucks for a bottle of whiskey. You put it in there, the snails will go in there, but that's another thing we'll talk about. So that, that's the formulation. If you can keep the ants going into their ant cafes, eating it at 1%, spraying your, your mixtures in the house, you'll find that uh, the ant population is very minor and won't bother. Most people don't mind having a few ants, ants running around a cycle. That's normal. Like I said, if you don't have any ants on your property, your property is so toxic, something's wrong. You see what I'm saying? Yes, dear? Is it 1% work acid, 1% sugar? No, 25% sugar. And the rest is water, right. And that's the maintenance level that you want to stay at. So a lot of people, they go buy the 5%, dilute it to 1%, or you can go buy boric acid and make your own 1% mixture, because boric acid is 100% boric acid, right? You don't want to use that straight. So you want to end up with a 1% boric acid solution, see? And that, that, same, that same solution works for cockroaches too, by the way. The little anchovate roaches will go in there. Only difference, instead of using sugar, you use some form of protein. I get uh, lard. You know, what's the name of that lard thing? Crisco or whatever, you know, right? Use that and they go after that. They, they go after that instead. So that's the basic formulation for the ant thing. And if you do that, your ant population will, will stay at a certain level because the ants are very important. You need ants for a lot of reasons on your property. Like I said, just to control the termites. But they, whatever, you know, whatever happens to your property, ants know. So they'll know about, they control, they, they herd aphids around, they herd mealybugs, they herd all kinds of creatures around, see, because they farm them. So that if you have a Wi-Fi infestation, the only way to control the Wi-Fi is control the ants. Where is that? Oh, she's not here. She's out there. I wonder if she knows we're having the workshop. <laughs> uh, so the lady has my book. Trying to teach her boss they have a Wi-Fi problem in their nursery. Got to control the ants. You're not gonna, otherwise, you're not going to solve the Wi-Fi problem. Once you control the ants, then you have to say, well, you know, if you were organic, the only reason why you have Wi-Fi is because of high nitrogen, okay? And that's the number one problem of all these, all the different diseases and everything is high nitrogen. Remember I talked about the urea. So anybody have any questions about the ants? When, so you have, <clears throat> you get this, this solution and you put it in many places. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Hmm? So you control the, the ants inside, and I know I've got an ants underneath my house. So you clock up the area. So what you do for ants underneath your house, you set up.
you set up these units in the places where those ants can get at. A lot of times, you, you don't, you know, even they're outside too, so you can set up the units outside because it will take it inside to their colony. 